Hi there, I'm Mark. Welcome to Start Making. We're going to hammer out these builds super quick. I'm not going to go into too much detail because they are super simple. I'm going to show you my seven items that I think sell the best. All of them are easy, repeatable, beginner friendly, and all I'm going to be using is two pieces of wood. Contrasting colours are going to make it look amazing. To make it really simple throughout the whole of the build for all of the different unique items, I'm going to join the boards at the start, glue them together, and then we can get on with cutting out each of the items. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how I think you guys could sell more of your product. And most importantly, I'm going to tell you how much these two boards cost me and how much I think you can sell everything that I've made from them for. The first thing I want to do is a wine bottle topper with the glasses on either side of it to hold it so you can carry a wine bottle and carry the glasses upside down next to it. I'm also going to let you off seeing all of the sanding and the finishing but just know I took everything up to about 150 to 180 grit and then I finished everything off with some Danish oil. Now, if you have a Randover bit and a router, this is exactly the time to use it. Just run it around all the edges and smooth off all the hard lines and then it's done. Just put some finish on it. Me, I have to do the hard work with a file, a bit of hard work, but it's going to look great. Okay, so we've got our four coasters roughly cut. They match up with the wine caddy's dimensions as well, which I think is going to match really nicely. This is going to be the base, and I've decided not to take the easy route. I was going to just put walls around it. I'm going to do something a bit different. We're just going to cut a few grooves, and we're going to have some bits stuck on your suit, I mean. It'll hold it in place, but it won't look standard. I did not allow for this recess in here. Top one of my coasters poked over it a bit. Wait, I've got it chamfered. So I'm gonna put something taller on this side to counteract from my blunder. I put a higher one at the back to correct my mistake of the lower one. So now when you sit them all in, they're held in place. On to the next bit. Next up, I wanna make something that is quite cool for a candle or two. I think it may be two. Two look quite nice.
The next thing I'm going to do is just cut out the sapel and then I'm going to mount the back and you're going to see exactly what this is going to become. Word of warning, this, this is gonna be, this is gonna be hot after using it for one, let alone five. Okay, we've now got five perfect circles. Now that, we need a solution for. Clean up time. Okay, I've chamfered the edges, bar a couple of holes to put it on the wall, is a key rack. I'm gonna keep going. In the comments, if you've got something that you use your scrap wood for potentially that you think is a great gift, something you sell, pop it in the comments because I am dying to know how many projects I can get out of these two planks. Does that count? No? All right. Not too bad, huh? More sanding? Oh, wow. So I'm just going to take some ultra thin CA glue, super glue, and just see if it goes inside the pores a little bit. Should have worn gloves. <laughs> if you can think of something better than what I'm about to make, drop it in the comments. Give me some ideas, small scraps of wood, what do you turn them into? These are seven items that I can almost guarantee will fly off your table at whatever craft fair you're gonna be at. The one thing we now have to do is make sure that they are gonna catch the eye and that anybody walking past your stall is gonna to have to not only stop, but pick them up, take a look, and part with their money. Put a nice coat of a shinier oil, wax, or maybe even lacquer on these. Go semi-gloss satin, or as I say, wax them, beeswax, something like that, so that they've just got that, they just catch the light in that certain way. Once they're catching the light, people are gonna to come to your table and then they're gonna look at this. Only put one of each item out. Make it look like that is the only one you're selling today, and that if that person who's walked past goes on and thinks about it, that is gonna disappear. It's okay to put another one up after they've bought it and walked off. Create a little bit of urgency without having to say a thing. Spread them out so they look a little bit nicer than this tempt people's imaginations into what they could be using your items for. Sure, we haven't done it for every single one of the items, but just having a phone in place, having your candles in there, having some pencils in, just sparks people's imaginations. And this at the back, this may not be the one that you're selling for the most money, but doesn't it look posh? You wanna push it one step further. Sell these with the candles. Sell this with some glasses. You don't have to sell them a bottle of wine. This one, knock up something that you can attach it to that implies that that's going to be a piece of wall, get some vintage keys, they don't go to anything, but they look great, and hang them off each and every one of the key rings. So, when somebody wants to test it, it's hanging there waiting for them. It looks really interesting up high, 
and they can take off a key and see how easy it is to pop it back in again. They can get a feel for it. They can start imagining it in their house. Some of these have got multifunction. I would suggest heavily that you set a couple of different sizes in your grooves here because mine fits perfectly with the case on but you might have someone who comes with a posh phone that doesn't have a case and they want it a little bit narrower. Have a few different sizes, it's really easy to do and it will mean that you have got no excuse for them not buying it. They cannot tell you that it won't work for what they want. Why not have one with a phone in it, one with business cards in it, one with a picture in it and one with an iPad in it or whatever else you can imagine that you think these will work for. The biggest reason that we use two planks of wood and we did it for everything on here is because we're gonna start pushing people to bundles. Those coasters match those candle holders. When I bring out this wine with a lovely contrasting wood, it will look great next to my two candle holders or my coasters or all three together. And why not have multiple matching sets? If somebody buys your coasters and your candle, replace all three with the next batch so take off everything that's Sapel and Oak and maybe bring up everything that's going to be beach and Sapel or beach and mahogany or whatever else you've used to make your builds. So clear the table and put the whole lot back up once you've sold enough of one. How much do I think you can make from this set of seven? So for this last section, what I've done is I have looked on the internet and just got a rough idea of what each and every one of these is selling for. For the two planks of wood, for the sapel and the oak, they were £12 each, making a total of £24. I admit I cheated and bought key rings and a little bit of leather for these. But apart from that, I, not, I didn't add anything in apart from to dress it up with some pencils and candles. So it's just wood and time. We're going to start with the wine caddy. It's its cheapest, £20 and it's most expensive for a hardwood one, around about 45 pounds. I've only compared coasters that have got a holder, minimum 25, maximum 45. Ring, 10 and 20 pounds if you wanted to. So the pencil block, I've just put minimum 10, maximum 10 pound. The phone stand, now we get onto that. I think you get between 20 minimum and 30 maximum on this. I think it's quite unique. I, I'm not the first person to make one. You put one of these at a craft fair, I think people will flock to see what it is and they, this will draw a lot of attention to your stall. Online, I couldn't find anything identical to this, so I found something similar, 20 pound minimum, and actually, I found things that went up to about 50 pound that weren't quite as nice as this. So I'm gonna say 20 to 50. Let me tell you the minimum selling price for all of these, and the maximum. Minimum cost, 117 pounds. The most you could sell for, in my opinion, is about 220 pounds. Now, if you take those two numbers together, I've got an average of about 168 pounds. That's not bad for a 24 pound investment. You can easily turn your 24 pounds for the wood into 168 pounds. I have no doubt that you could sell them, especially around this time of year for that much money. Good luck at the craft fairs. See you next time.